today we'll be working the January 2022 question one. And it says, using a calculator otherwise, find the exact value of 8.9 plus 31.6 divided by 0 0.75 multiplied by 5.4. So what we'll do is first go ahead and add the numerators, then uh, multiply the denominator and then perform a simple division. All of this can be done using your calculator as it is a paper tool and you have access to your calculator. So when we do 8.9 plus 31.6, what we'll get is 40.5. And then when we do 0 0.75 multiplied by 5.4, what we'll get is 4.05. And then we can go ahead and do our division. So when we divide 40.5 divided by 4.05, what we'll get is 10 being our answer. So we'll have 10 being our answer, and that is our answer for part A1 of this question. Part two now says, we're, so we're using a calculator otherwise again to find the value of 33.9 tan 18 degrees correct to one decimal place. So what we're going to do is first find tan 18. So we have 3.9 multiply by tan 18. And when you put tan 18 in your calculator, what you'll get is 0 0.3249. And then when you perform 3.9 multiply by 0 0.3249, what we'll get is 1.26711. But that is not our final answer because the instruction further went on to say we're to write it correct to one decimal place so what we get is one point and then our first the number that we're interested in behind the decimal point is two so right here is our cutoff point so we're looking at the digit that follows is it greater than or equal to five and we know if it is we'll add one to this decimal place in this case it is because it is a six so therefore our final answer would be 1.3 and that is our final answer Part B1 now says, Rhea is paid at the rate of $13.50 per hour. During a certain week, she worked 40 hours. How much did she earn that week? So all we're doing is calculating. So she gets $13.50 per hour and she worked 40 hours in a given week. So all we're doing is calculating her weekly wage. So therefore, her weekly wage it is equal to the hourly rate the hourly rate or the hourly pay multiplied by the total hours so the total hours that she worked in that week so therefore the weekly wage it is equal to the hourly rate is thirteen dollars and fifty cents and that is being multiplied by the total hours which is 40 hours so therefore the weekly wage when you do that calculation 1350 multiplied by 40 what you'll get as your final answer is 540 dollars so therefore in that given week where she worked 40 hours she went home with 540 dollars as her wage Part two now says, Rhea worked four weeks in the month of August and her gross earnings was $2,463.75. Her, her regular week comprised of 40 hours, which we saw in the question before, and she's paid overtime at one and a half times the hourly rate. And it says, show that Rhea worked 15 hours in overtime. So where we can start, all right? So four weeks, she worked four weeks in August and she got $2,463.75. And it says a regular week comprised of 40 hours and overtime is paid at one and a half times. So what we know is that she worked overtime because the question is asking us to calculate or to prove that she worked 15 hours in overtime. So what we can start with is by first calculating how much she's paid for overtime. So overtime pay, it is equal to one and a half times 
a regular hourly rate. And a regular hourly rate, rate that we saw in the question before is $13.50. So therefore, our overtime pay, when you do one and a half or 1.5 times $13.50, what we'll get is $20.25. So therefore, for her overtime pay, for her overtime pay, Rhea is getting $20.25 for every hour that she works in overtime. So what we can then do is to calculate how much money from this $2,463.75 that Rhea got for overtime. So we know that one week, when she worked one week with 40 hours, she got $540. So therefore, for four weeks pay, Rhea would get, it would be $540 multiply by that four weeks in August. And when you do that, you will get 2160 So this would be a regular wage if she only worked 40 hours in, the, in each week for the four weeks that was given. But the question told us that she got $2,463. So if four weeks in a regular wage with 40 hours per week would give us 2160 Therefore, whatever that remains from this $2,463.75 would be your overtime pay. So therefore, overtime pay is equal to, it would be $2,463.75 minus a regular wage, which would be $2,160. When you do that calculation, what you'll get is $303.75. So therefore, Rhea is paid $303.75 in overtime pay. So therefore, to calculate her overtime, so therefore, overtime hours would therefore be equal to, it would be the overtime pay being divided by the overtime. So the overtime amount, which is let's not because we call this overtime pay so let's call this overtime wage so this is the overtime wage so we're doing overtime wage it's being divided by this right here would be the overtime hourly pay or the overtime pay so it is overtime hourly pay and that would be the 300 and $3.75 divided by the $20.25. Uh, okay. So $303.75 being divided by $20.25. And when you do that, therefore, overtime hours is equal to 15 Hours. And that is how we proved or showed that Rhea worked 15 hours overtime in August. So we first looked at how much she's being paid for the overtime wage or overtime hourly pay. So we first looked at that, which they told us it was one and a half times a regular pay, which is 20, and we got $20.25. They said she worked four weeks in August with the regular hours being 40 hours. So all we did was, we know that 40 hours from the question before would have given us $540. So all we did was to multiply that 540 by four weeks and we got 2,160. So her total pay was $2,463.75. We subtracted her regular, her regular wage for four weeks from that amount and we got $303.75 that she got in additional money. So we're attributing this to her overtime wage. So therefore, to calculate her overtime hours, all we did was to divide the overtime wage by the overtime hourly pay 
and we will get the hours that she worked in overtime. Part three now says, in August, 20% of Rhea's gross earning was deducted as tax. How much money did she have left after the deduction? So just simple percentage. So one way of looking at it, we could just say 20%, it would be 20 over 100 multiplied by her gross earnings. So it will be 20 over 100 being multiplied by $2,463.75. So this, what we're calculating is the deduction. So this is the deduction amount of so 20%. So this is the deduction amount. So when we do 20% of 2,000 of our gross salary, what we'll get is $492.75. So this is the amount that was deducted from Rhea's pay. So therefore, how much she has left? So therefore, the amount that she has left, it would be the 2,000, which, is our, which was our pay, $2,463.75 minus the deduction, which is $492.75. And therefore, at the end, Rhea got $1,971 as her pay. So that would be what she has left after the deduction. Part four now says Rhea invested 200 and, and by the way another way of looking at part three is that if 20 percent was deducted as tax what we know is therefore that Rhea got 80 percent of her money so you could have also just went ahead and do 2463 dollars and 75 cents multiplied by 80 percent and you'd have still gotten the 1971 dollars so that's a one-step approach that could be taken in working that Part four, it now says Rhea invested $219 of her earnings for three years at a rate of 4.5% per annum, simple interest. How much interest does she receive after three years? So we know that the formula for simple interest is simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time with all of that being divided by 100. So we are looking at how much interest, which is a simple interest. So she invested $219, which would be the principal amount. Being multiplied by the rate, the rate that they told us it was a rate of 4.5%, being multiplied by the time, and they told us that it was three years. And all of that is divided by 100. When you put that in your calculator, you will get your simple interest. All right, well, let's first, let's work the numerator portion. So if we should do 219 multiplied by 4.5 multiplied by three, what we'll get is 2,956.5 being divided by 100. Uh, Okay, we have to put this in brackets. So let's see if brackets here would work. I know, so I have to put brackets around the first one. So this is the 2,956 being the 0.5 divided by 100. All right, good, that is it. So therefore, our simple interest is equal to $29.00 and 57 cents. So we're writing it to two decimal places because we're looking at dollars. And that would be the simple interest received after three years. So thank you for joining us for part one and we'll definitely see you again in part two.